How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. Here we are coming full circle and finally reviewing the last Jackbox Party Pack, which is in fact the first Jackbox Party Pack. I've been working my way backwards and we now have reviews for all the current six Party Pack releases. For those unfamiliar, Jackbox Party Packs are a series of minigame compilations that are played through your phone. One person must purchase one of these packs on any number of devices, computers, consoles, Apple TV, and even a few more. Everyone else playing then goes to jackbox.tv and plays through a browser. No need for any apps or installations, just an internet connection. If you plan to play this online over Google Meets, Zoom, Discord, be sure you have the means to screen share whatever version you do buy. The Jackbox YouTube channel even has a handy tutorial video on how to do that. It's a great way to stay in touch and have fun with your friends remotely. I'm a minute into this and I'm already sick of saying Jackbox Party Pack over and over again. I'm gonna try and suppress that throughout the rest of this. Jackbox 1 is coming after the original You Don't Know Jack trivia series and a few other one-off games, with the idea being to bundle together the hits from those offerings for the player's convenience. Keep in mind, this does come before Jackbox really became a streaming sensation, so it doesn't really have the Twitch and audience implementations that are now staples of the series. That doesn't mean you can't connect with friends online to play, just that there won't be participation options for the potential hundreds of viewers you want to join in. For that same reason, it also generally lacks streamer-friendly options like the ability to turn on extended timers. I imagine that'll mean more to people who are more up-to-date with the series. This party pack features a more fully formed sequel to the very popular You Don't Know Jack trivia games, the very first Drawful, an expanded version of the standalone Fibbage, a multiplayer version of the originally single player Lie Swatter, and the all new Word Spud. I'll be summarizing the gameplay of each and explaining what I like and dislike about all of them. Starting with You Don't Know Jack 2015, made for 1 to 4 players. The low player limit is a relic of the original trivia series and is something that comes to be one of the great hindrances of this game. Almost every Jackbox game in every pack works best in the range of 5 to 7 players, including everything else in this pack. This is a lesson that the Jackbox team has clearly learned with every trivia game since offering room for up to 8 players. It's a shame because the trivia is so unique and interesting. They pioneered what they call high culture meets pop culture trivia, where the questions are are presented in obscure, mind-bending ways that not only require trivia knowledge, but the ability to reason through each question's odd framing. So not only is it layering in multiple forms of trivia into a given question, it's a little bit of a mind-bender. Not to mention other question-type switch-ups like this or that, or the put the choices into order, then buzz in and see if you're right question type. It's the put the choices into order, then buzz in and see if you are right. Answering quickly earns you more cash, while answering incorrectly loses cash. And if that weren't punishing enough, everyone starts with one screw used to mess with people. A screwed player must answer immediately. The screwer earns bonus cash if the screwee gets it wrong. The game show format is fantastic, the trivia is unlike anything else you've probably ever seen, and the host, Cookie Masterson, adds a lot of humor to almost every interaction of the game. But I do need to say, everything about the concept was expanded upon and improved in Jackbox 5. So if this is the only game in the pack that really appeals to you and you want the ability to play with 8 players, you might want to consider that one instead. I'll have a link in the description and an end card at the very end of the video that links to my full playlist of reviewing all of these party packs if you want a little more information, that would be a good resource. It's incredibly fun trivia, you're gonna have a blast, it's just a shame that only four of you are gonna have a blast. Next we have Drawful, made for three to eight players. Drawing games have become a major Jackbox staple, with Jackbox 1 through 5 all featuring some variation on poorly drawing things with bulky touchscreen pens, limited color palettes, and usually no eraser. And that all started with Drawful, which is likely still the best Jackbox drawing-based game. For me personally, it's between Drawful and Bidiots, which isn't in this particular pack. Every player is given a random phrase from a large pool of options. They then have to sketch out this drawing as best they can in a limited amount of time. After all of those are submitted, players are presented with these pictures one at a time. Every player but the artist needs to interpret your monstrosity and pitch what they believe the artist's prompt may have been. What was it they read that led to this drawing? While it's tempting to submit funny answers, keep in mind that the goal is to fool everyone else. That's how you earn points. After every possible prompt is submitted, they are all displayed on screen together. Players then vote on which they believe was the original phrase. 
The artist gets points for each player who guesses correctly, incentivizing them to actually draw well, while all the non-drawers earn points for fooling others into guessing theirs instead. I really love how everyone is so involved in this one, and how much opportunity it presents to be creative. For the artist, it's kind of like jumping to the end of Pictionary. People aren't guessing as you're drawing, they only get to guess at the very end. Throw in a bit of balderdash trying to fool your friends, and it's going to be one of the most fun games you play every Jackbox session. I don't mean to keep underselling this pack, it just has the drawback of being improved upon since its original release. The standalone Drawful 2 was made a few years later that allows for a second color, features 50% more prompts, and the ability to add in your own custom phrases, but there still isn't an eraser. It largely makes this first one feel obsolete, and if you think this is going to be your highlight of your nights, you might be better off just buying that standalone that's not tied to any other packs. The inverse of that is maybe you don't want to splash out for a standalone, you don't feel like you get as much bang for your buck, you can still have plenty of fun with the original Drawful. This pack has other appeals, Drawful is borderline a sell point to make the entire thing worth it, especially at a discount. Probably the game I have the least to say about, Word Spud, made for 2-8 to eight players. This is the only game in this pack that didn't come as a follow-up to something else from the Jackbox team, or eventually receive a sequel of any kind. I think there is the kernel of an idea where this could have worked or been built upon, but for some reason it's presented and played in one of the most boring, unimaginative ways possible. One word drifts towards a player. They submit their suggested word association. The group collectively approves or denies this. When denied, the word moves towards someone else to submit their own new association. If it was instead passed, then this new word will drift towards someone else. And then rinse and repeat. You earn points for having your word approved, and the winner is the one with the most points at the end. If you're wondering, this footage on screen is, is not slowed down. This is, this is the exhilarating screen that you're all watching throughout. It is insane how much this game drags. Only one person really gets to feel like they're playing at a time. And if they draw a blank, then it's just an uncomfortable wait while they flounder. I guess the saving grace is that sessions of this are incredibly short, but that should not be the main appeal of your game. There was no reason to not have everyone submit options and put it to a vote. Then everyone is constantly playing. There's no incentive to simply reject everyone else every time, and there would be more room to joke around. Maybe you slip in a funny one now and again. It would be more like playing best ball in golf. You run with what was the funniest, leaving that window wide open to build off of and continue being funny. If not funny, then at the very least creative or inventive. I have to think someone came up with the idea of five games being right for a party pack, and this was tacked on to the existing games to round things out and meet a deadline, so it's super poorly conceived and even more poorly executed. Seriously, look how bland and non-exciting that is. Yikes. Somebody's gotta say it. Word Spud may just be the worst all-time game featured in a party pack. But there is a part of me, deep down, that hopes that someday they create a Word Spud 2, or, or just something, something that builds on this concept and turn it into something salvageable. Maybe it's better off left dead in the dirt like the potato that it is. After that, we have Lie Swatter, the game that was originally a single-player mobile game, now expanded for 1 to 100 players. That's a record that still stands. I'm not sure if there's any recorded evidence of someone actually doing it, reaching a full 100-player count. Let me know if there is a place to find that somewhere, I'd like to see it. So many Jackbox games now have audience features where you get to participate, but you're not really in the running to win. I think it's really interesting that any of those 100 players could actually win this one. But in the end, it's not that exciting. It's trivia boiled down into true or false. So for every piece of trivia you're presented with, you have those two options. Earn points by getting it right, lose points for getting it wrong, with a bonus for whoever answered correctly first. Each of the colored flies represents a different trivia category, answering one question from each. At the end of each of these two rounds, you get a quick update of the current rankings, and the final round then has all the flies posing questions from one singular category. It just feels a little underdeveloped, honestly both in its single player and multiplayer iterations. Adding the ability for 100 people to play along is really interesting, but it didn't really make that base concept any more exciting. It is noteworthy that this is the first game hosted by Schmitty, who would become the host of all editions of Quiplash from here on. But really, the host doesn't add a whole lot to the experience this time around. 
I don't think they quite refined the now staple way that the hosts are able to riff on the gameplay and the players, despite using only canned responses. Seriously, it's really cool the way they do that now. I like seeing the early iterations of it where they're still figuring that out. But in general, Liespotter is pretty weak, it's not terrible, but it's not engaging enough to warrant buying the pack, and you'll likely get bored of it quickly enough that you'll only play it once in a night, or maybe even once ever. It has more staying power than Word Spud, but only by a hair. Ending on a strong note, we have Fibbage XL. This is the first party pack iteration of what is now a classic, made for 2-8 to eight players. This has become a cornerstone of the Jackbox series, and as I explain in my Jackbox 2 review, the best version is now Fibbage 3 in the party pack 4. If you like the sounds of this game, if this is what you're here for, that pack is going to be the one for you. On their turn, the player picks a category, and everyone is presented with an obscure factoid that has a word or phrase missing. Each player must then submit their own lie. The goal is to offer up something convincing that you think will trick everyone else. Similar to how scores are counted in Drawful, you earn points when players guess your submission, and if you guess correctly. While these two games' gameplay is very similar in that way, they fill completely different niches and are both incredibly welcome in this pack. You can easily play both back to back, flipping between the two without feeling like it's the same experience, so don't worry if things sound repetitive. While they have those similarities, I don't want people to walk away from this thinking they're getting ripped off with the same game twice. They are completely different. The general gameplay is the same in all three rounds, with points doubled in the second round and tripled in the final round, which consists of only one prompt. As a fun little addition, players can like answers that they find funny or enjoyable in some way. The player who received the most likes earns the thumbs cup at the end, something very thematically fitting for this own channel, but really, it's just an elaborate participation trophy. Better luck next time. Fibbage is excellent. Just keep in mind that this is the base version of it. It's a step up from the standalone, but it's not quite on par with the sequels. Fibbage 2 added audience participation, and Fibbage 3 has a much more fun theme and an alternate game mode that might actually be the most fun way to play this. So if out of these five Jackbox 1 games, Fibbage is the one that has you the most excited, I recommend looking further into Jackbox 4 and seeing if you like the sound of the other four games in that pack more. I want to try and give a quick summary here. If you are 100% new to Jackbox, with zero prior experience, this might actually be a great entry point in the series for you. You don't know Jack, Drawful, and Fibbage are all fantastic games. It's a shame that the trivia is limited to four players, so definitely keep that in mind. But I would recommend this pack simply because it gives you the opportunity to milk these early editions dry before deciding if you want or need the newer iterations. Me and my friends played Drawful and Fibbage XL for years before we felt the need to pick up any newer packs. Now we're diehard fans and buy them every year, but you can get so much mileage out of this pack on its own, especially if you're playing these originals first, as it would be incredibly hard to ever go back after first trying their updated versions. So. Maybe you could treat this like a demo of the Jackbox series at large. It gets heavily discounted quite regularly, often selling for under $10. That would be the time to do it, especially since Word Spud and Lie Swatter aren't really worth it. And once you give it a chance, you'll either burn out on the concept or find that you have a new party obsession. If you're anything like our group, you'll want to play Jackbox all the time. Then you can explore the newer packs, get a better feel for your personal Jackbox minigame preferences, or simply buy up the expanded versions of the games you liked in this first pack, continuing on with what you already know you enjoy. While future installments have hurt the lasting appeal of this original pack, there is still a lot of fun to be had here. You'll have to consider what exactly it is you think sounds the most fun to you. And with that, I'm done. I got solid reviews of all six of these packs now, I'll have end card links to all of that if you want to see it for yourself, as well as a playlist of all the Jackbox videos we've ever recorded Let's Play style on our other channel. Now we just get to sit and patiently wait for the fall for the upcoming Jackbox 7. I'm looking forward to that, maybe more than I ever have another Jackbox pack, because I'm going in fresh having revisited all these old packs and knowing exactly what I want out of it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.